Oh, All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's program. It's called Fire Stations of Westchester County. This program is co-sponsored by the Yonkers Historical Society. Today we have the author of Fire Stations of Westchester County here. His name is Mark Young, so I'm looking forward to this presentation. We actually ordered copies of this book. So after this presentation, you can place a copy of this book on hold and pick it up at the Yonkers Public Library. So um, Mark, I'm, I'm looking forward to this presentation. You know, uh, there's uh, family members that I know that are actually in the fire department. So this should be really interesting for me. Okay. Well, as well as getting the book from the library, you can also go to doolittle.com, which is my website. You can buy it from there. You can save $5 on it with the code. I'm not going to miss the chance to get in an ad there. But basically, what my plan is for tonight is to talk a little bit about firefighting, a little bit about firefighting in, West, in Westchester and Yonkers, and then to show some of the photos and some of the more interesting parts of firefighting from Westchester County. So um, it's the first time I've ever done a talk on Zoom, so it's all new to me. So anything that goes wrong, it's Mike's fault. Just don't worry about that. Um, I'm Mark Young. I'm a Westchester-based author, photographer, and fire volunteer. I also own a barbershop up in Buchanan, which is how I originally discovered volunteer firefighting. I've been in Westchester for about 12 years. Before that, I lived in Manhattan, New Jersey, Sydney, and Perth in Australia. I knew nothing at all about firefighting or volunteers or anything to do with it until around 10 years ago. Um, I always assumed when you went past a fire station, they were run by professionals, all sorts of people who knew a lot of stuff about firefighting. And when my son was young, he was about three or four, whenever we would go by a fire station, we would stop and all the firemen pre-pandemic would let us climb all over the fire engines. They would sometimes start the sirens up, they would do bells. And basically they showed all the little kids a good time. Um, I worked as a photographer and a journalist for newspapers, magazines, radio stations, all over Australia and in the USA. In the early 2000s, when the internet became popular, um, magazines and newspapers went into steep decline and I had to do something different. Um, everyone says, well, you could have got online, you could have done it, but the internet didn't pay as well as, as it did in print. So I wrote a few books, I wrote a series of joke books, they sold okay, and I realized that I couldn't make a living writing books. So I retrained as a hairdresser and barber. And about seven years ago, I bought the Buchanan Barber Shop. And a lot of my customers came in, were members of the fire department, and they saw a somewhat able-bodied person and they said, you should join the firehouse. It's only a dollar a beer and $12 a year. And um, I said, I don't know anything about fire. I don't know anything about this. And they said, it doesn't matter. Come in, we'll train you. We'll teach you everything that you need to know. So I became a member of the Buchanan Fire Department. I got involved with the fire police and became a sergeant there. Last year, the pandemic hit and I was sitting at home for 13 weeks when we were closed by order of New York State, and I had absolutely nothing to do. And I thought I could do another book. And I looked at a variety of different books and ideas and things that I could do. 
And I decided I wanted to do a book on history of some sort. And I looked around and there were already books on churches and buildings and things like that. But there was nothing that had ever been done exclusively on firefighters, firefighting, fire stations, fire equipment in Westchester. There were a couple of books of firehouses and things like that um, nationally. And I thought, what about doing one in Westchester? And I discovered there were around 132 fire stations, not that many departments, but many departments have multiple fire stations. So I started work on doing the book, thinking it wouldn't take that long. And it took me about a year to do going and visiting fire stations and places like that. And I learned a whole lot about our history in firefighting. Now, firefighting and fire stations have been around in America pretty much since the, you know, the country was established, the colony was here. And while firefighters today are very respected and, and um, seen as esteemed members of society, um, it wasn't always the case. I mean, there was just a little um, thing I saw about a, a service that's providing handymen and they only hire firefighters because they've been cleared by everything. But in the beginning, firefighters were basically thugs. In ancient Rome, Marcus Crassus set up his own private fire brigade with 500 men to fight fires. And you might think this was a good idea, but Marcus had ulterior members, ulterior motives. Uh, he was really a bit of a con artist. When a fire, a fire alarm was started, his men would rush to the fire and do nothing. They would just stand around. And what Marcus would do is he would find the building owner and start negotiating with him to buy his property. And if the owner of the building agreed to sell him the building at a bargain basement price, Marcus's men would put out the fire. If they didn't, they would let the building go and burn, burn to the ground. And while you might think that was you know, not really that useful. Things were similar in the USA a few hundred years later. Basically, fire companies were either run by volunteers or a privately owned corporation. There were no rules, there was no nothing. Anyone who wanted to could be a firefighter. And fire companies would compete to put out the fire because the first fire company that arrived on the scene would get paid by the insurance company. As a result, New York City had competing fire departments and completing, competing police forces. And you used to basically have to pay them protection money so that if there was a fire, they would come to your aid. For that reason, firefighters were known as land pirates because they would rob and plunder. Often firefighters would loot the building before they put out the fire. And in other cases, they would actually set buildings on fire so that they could collect a check from the insurance company and justify their existence to all the people who paid the fire tax in there. And up until a few years ago, there were still counties in the United States where the fire department would refuse to come and put out the fire if you didn't to pay the fire tax. I remember one case maybe 20 years ago in Massachusetts where the fire company showed up and because the house was outside the city and they contracted to the county and that homeowner hadn't paid his tax to the county, they basically, um, they refused to actually put out the fire and the firefighters stood there 
helpless, unable to do anything while the guy's house burnt to the ground. And um, in the US, the first fire codes were introduced in 1630, when Boston introduced the first regulation, which banned chimneys made of wood. I mean, unbelievable to think that anyone ever thought that was a good idea. But apparently that was very common in the early days that the fire chimneys were made of it. In 1648, Governor Peter Stuyvesant, who may or may not have been corrupt, appointed several fire inspectors to find building owners who ignored the fire codes, which let's say were not that stringent and were less than obvious. When a fire was spotted, someone would yell cry, would then cry out, throw out your buckets, and a volunteer fire brigade would be formed and they would basically pass buckets from one to the other with water in them to try and put out the fire. This wasn't that very effective and many houses and businesses were actually burned to the ground as a result of this. As time went on, things became more and more advanced. In the 1800s, they started using horses and that allowed um, bigger equipment, bigger water tanks, things to be moved between building and around different parts of the city. Um, more and more volunteer fire departments sprung up and many notable people, as well as commoners, so to speak, became involved in the fire departments. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were both volunteer firefighters. Since then, the role of firefighters has expanded enormously. And in Westchester, most fire departments don't only do fire protection. A lot of them do ambulance, a lot of them do EMT work, a lot of them also run community outreach. Our department in Buchanan, for example, will go to schools, will go to our daycare centers, will turn up with a fire department fire engine will run education. And in Yonkers, I know they do a similar thing. The US is sort of unusual with fire services because while most cops are paid, some departments do have volunteer cops. In the US, most fire services are provided by volunteers. Yonkers is unusual because all of the city's fire stations are staffed by career firefighters, and they respond to incidents 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Elsewhere in Westchester, most of the departments are volunteer, but there's also an unusual hybrid here in Westchester in which we have what are called combination departments where they have both volunteers and paid staff. And some of these departments include Eastchester, Fairview, Harrison, Hartsdale, Lake Mohican, Larchmont, the town of Mamaroneck, the Montrose VA, Mount Vernon, Peekskill, Pelham, Power Manor, Rybrook, Scarsdale, New Rochelle, Westchester County Airport, and the city of White Plains. Now, while you might not think of Montrose VA and Westchester County as Provide, county airport is providing services. They do respond to mutual aid calls. And many of the, um, the Montrose VA, for example, have a, um, have a hazmat team that will actually come out when hazardous, um, hazardous chemicals are spilled. Now, Westchester got involved in firefighting in 1812 when the Washington Fire Engine Number no. 1 was formed at Sing Sing. They purchased a tub-style 1780s gooseneck pump from New York City. Well, they don't use the pump anymore. The company is still going today, but it's no longer based in Sing Sing. Arsening has about 450 active volunteers, nine companies, and seven firehouses. Yonkers which is the biggest city, 
have more than respond to more than 15,000 calls every year. Yonkers started firefighting in 1852 when the protection company number one was formed. In 1853, they formed the Hook, La Hook, the Hope, Hook and Ladder Company and the Lady Washington, the Lady Washington Engine Company were formed as private firefighting companies. In 1855, three years later, the village of Yonkers bought the fire apparatus from the private citizens who owned the fire companies. And from 1868 until 1890, 14 additional fire companies were created. Yonkers had 386 volunteer firemen in 1888. And in, 19, in 1896, they formed the Yonkers Fire Department. Then in June 1900, they announced pl plans to build a fire station on Oak Street, which um, looks something like this. And it's unusual in the fact that it's right between two houses. Um, you'd sort of hate to live there. And in... Um, 1801, sorry, 1901, they opened one in Radford Street, which is still in use today. I actually took this photo sometime last year and it's now under renovation and it's still covered in scaffolding. The other thing that's unusual about Yonkers is many of the fire stations are actually combined fire and police. So you can see this one actually has police here. And you can also see a car parked in front of the fire doors, which is in total violation of any fire rules whatsoever. But it looks like there's a person there. However, I can't imagine the firefighters would be too pleased with it. Here's another historic place on Schonard um, Place Yonkers, which was opened in the early 1900s. And it's pretty impressive fire station. There's actually a couple of fire stations scattered through Yonkers and through White Plains that look just like houses like this. And many of the firefighters in Yonkers do 12 hour shifts or 24 hour shifts and do stay in there. In 1902, they opened up a fire station at 456 Central Park Avenue. That's not this one. This one is actually across from the Cross County Shopping Center and was actually opened in 1931. When I took the photo, they had it totally covered in scaffolding. I went back a few times. No matter how nice I was to them, the guys there all refused to take down the scaffolding so that I could get a decent picture. So as a result, this is as good as it gets. Um, the one, um, this one was also opened in 1910 on Sawmill Road. And if you look at this one and the earlier picture we had, you can see they're both very, very similar. The difference is up the top, this one has the horse's heads in it. And further down on this one, you can see there's a peacock in there and there's an eagle, and there's some subtle differences between it. When you actually go and talk to the firefighters, one thing you'll notice about firefighters is they have um, an incredible amount of pride in what they do. And these guys will happily point out the difference to you between every fire station they have and why theirs is better. Firefighters are also amazing people. And when I started, 
I was sort of scared to go up and ask them to do anything. And in the early days of the book, a lot of the fire stations had closed doors because I didn't want to go up to them. I discovered afterwards that when I went up to them, they would happily open the doors. In many cases, they would move the equipment. They would do basically anything I wanted to do to get a good picture and make their firehouse actually look good. Um, okay, that's the Radford one. There was another station that's still in operation on Bronxville Road. This one is a small station, very, very unusual in that it's right on the Yonkers Bronxville border. And they do respond to mutual aid calls for it. This is an incredibly nice station and all the, all the career guys were absolutely wonderful. Fort Field Avenue, still in business. Um, they could only open one door at the time because they were doing something, but they were absolutely, absolutely terrific. And you can see where the guys lift, live when they're running 24 hour shifts. This station is probably the ugliest station they have in Yonkers. I was there. This is not the one that went into um, operation in 1930, but it's still there. When I was there, the alarm actually sounded, which is how I got the picture of the fire engine. And you can see all the lights on there. They were actually responding to a call. Um, this station is virtually falling down. It went into um, operation in 1856. I, God, I'm totally can't even read anymore. It went in in 1956. And again, it's in a very commercial area. The fire guys there happily opened the door. And this one um, on Central Park Avenue, no matter what I did, I could not get a decent shot of it. Another interesting thing in Yonkers is this one says fire station number 14, but there's only 11 stations in Yonkers because a number of stations there have actually, um, you know, been phased out and are no longer actually, you know, no longer actually being used. And then uh, this gorgeous station on Vark Street. Um, guys, they were absolutely wonderful, terrific getting the photo taken. But the problem I had was there was no parking in the area. And I basically parked in their fire zone to get the picture. And this is the newest fire station in Yonkers, which actually was commissioned in 2020. The reason this station was commissioned was interesting because the old fire station, there were actually two on this street. And in 2012, they declared the third and the fourth floor of this building, the previous building here to be unsafe. And then in 2015, they determined the entire station to be unsafe and it was condemned. In 2017, they agreed on plans to build a four base, base station on New School Street, Palisades Avenue, Elm Street, and Engine, and Engine Place. And this opened on April 6, 2020. And it's a pretty impressive station. It's also the headquarters of the Yonkers Fire Department. Although I'm almost certain the chief is actually down at Town Hall and he's not in this building. Um, and now Yonkers consists of 11 fire stations, 10 engine companies, six ladder companies, a squad and a rescue company. Now, when I was doing the book, I was sort of running all around, you know, all of Westchester taking pictures. And there were a number of things I discovered. One is 
the amount of old antique cars that are still around. Now, this piece of equipment in Briarcliff Manor is one of the original engines from there. It actually has ladders on it. And they have actually owned this since 1932. And they keep it in immaculate condition and it was restored by some of their members. Chappaqua have an, another very, um, very immaculate fire engine that's actually a Mack truck. It still has the dog on the front, as does the one from Briarcliff Manor. These pieces of equipment are generally kept in immaculate condition, but there are only a couple of members who are allowed to drive them because they come with very, very, very iffy brakes on it. The Plank have their own 1930 car there, which they will take to parades, but they won't drive it to parades. They will take it on the back of their trailer and then they will unload it every time they are there. South Salem have another fire engine, which is in pretty impressive condition. Um, there, Harrison, another one. Hartsdale have one. Hartsdale's a combination fire department of career people and volunteers. This is one that the volunteers are actually restoring and the career firefighters won't actually touch it. Katona not only have a fire engine, they also have an original horse-drawn cart there. Lake Mohican have their engine and another hand-drawn cart, which I think they may have used with horses, but originally it was hand-drawn. Millwood have theirs actually fenced off to prevent anyone touching it. Apparently all of their volunteers were incredibly in love with it and would go up there. Peekskill have a mini museum in their brand new fire station. They closed five fire stations last year and consolidated them into one. And they put some of their equipment on display, but getting in there is virtually impossible. Picantico Hills have another piece of equipment this station is interesting because it only handles about half a dozen calls a year, but it was built as part of the Rockefeller estate. So as a result, it is extremely well-funded and they have a couple of a couple of other modern engines. And Scarsdale have a old fire truck that I couldn't get any information about. Somers have their old hand-drawn cart on display outside their headquarters and outside one of their substations, not the headquarters. Now in Buchanan, this is our brand new $550,000 fire engine that has just arrived. You can see they've started adding all sort of ornamental facilities to it. We have an American flag on it. Elmsford also have an American flag on it. And as a member, they were more than happy to pull it out for me. Now, one of the other interesting things about the fire departments is colors of fire engines. So Buchanan is red. Hartsdale is sort of a yellowy green. Mamaroneck Village have a dark green. Mount Vernon have a red ladder. Tarrytown in one of their stations have a blue truck. Thornwood have yellow trucks and Verplank has an actual green truck. And the reason Verplank is green is because they're all Irish. Um, Verplank is also one of two or three departments that have a boat. Mainly the boat is used when people jump off the Bear Mountain Bridge. So they go out and retrieve the body along with um, the guys from Continental Village and West Haverstraw on the other side of the river. 
Westchester County Airport has a fully functioning fire station there. Getting this, this photo required TSA permission and a background check. This truck on my left, you can see it has a piece of equipment here. That is a very sharp pointy, um, pointy point. And that is used if there is a fire to actually break through the aircraft skin and so they can get access to the fire and um, hopefully put it out. Yonkers, another one. They have a lot of old equipment in Yonkers. You can see the doors are open on the fire truck. The reason for that is if there's a fire, it can save seconds. The guys, whoever is on duty in Yonkers, also leave the gear right there so they can get changed and rush to the scene should something needed to be done. Um, Pelham, this is the cover of the book. <coughs> the guys pulled out the actual fire trucks, um, turned on all their <coughs> lights so that I could get a great picture of it. On the other side of the fire engine, there's also a police station with power. Vahawa, this is one of my favorite pictures in the entire book, but I can never actually go back there again because <clears throat> it took about 40 minutes to get the, shop, uh, get the shot as I had the guys going back and forth, moving the trucks until everything was lined up. This, what you see is called a fire ring. And what the fire ring does is they used to come and hit that. Um, it's um, so that they could gather all of the men to let them know there was a fire. And there's a few of these through Westchester. Sleepy Hollow has a Pepsi machine in front of every firehouse they have. And apparently it raises a considerable amount of money it's a total volunteer department. This station was different to all the others because they still had the original doors. And while in most fire stations, I asked them to open the doors and move the engine out. I did that here, but this one looked better with the doors closed. Purchase have a very impressive looking ladder that they use because they have the college and they have a number of buildings along with companies in the area. The Maranek, this one, when I was there, the chief said to me, I asked the chief to take pictures and he told the guys to do whatever I wanted them to do. I got all the guys to put every piece of equipment they owned out the front to turn all the lights on. We ended up causing a traffic jam of about 40, <coughs> 45 minutes when everyone backed up, when everyone stopped to look at it. Mohican Lake, the, this here is pieces of the original Rural Trade Center. They put them online, um, so that they put them in there so everyone would remember. And no matter how hard I tried, I could not get that engine to line up with it. Hawthorne were very similar to Mamaronek. They put, took their equipment out, turned it on, let me get my picture. Um, you discover all sorts of things when you're wandering around. These are some of the dead bodies I found in the firehouses um, around there. These are used for first aid training as all active firefighters are supposed to be CPR trained. Here was one of the fire buckets that we talked about earlier. Firefighters have a weird sense of humor. In um, Rye, there was a booter outside the firehouse. They put a mask on him. Sleepy Hollow had a couple firefighters hanging out in their front garden along with the bell. Um, that was the World Trade um, statue at fire headquarters in Valhalla. Hastings have converted an old church into a fire station. This has apparently been there. They've been using this since the, around the 1920s. 
and it was a, and it's been used as their firehouse ever since. Um, that pretty much sums up. I'm a little bit over the 30 minutes, but if anyone has any questions, I will attempt to answer them. Hey, Mark, any comments about the county uh, training center up at the, the Grasslands Reservation? Yeah, I mean, basically, um, any of the active firefighters are supposed to go training through there. And um, when you join the department, if you're young enough, they actually train all of the volunteer departments. I went there and did the fire police course there. It was very good instructors there, very impressive um, center. Um, I can only say good things about it, but I don't know that much about it because I tend to be involved more on a local level than you know I am with it. Although I know a number of the guys there because they let me come in and take photos. You can unmute yourselves if you have any questions. Okay, so Mark, how many active, um, like, I mean, full-time firefighters are there in Worcester County? I have no idea. <laughs> There's a lot more active volunteers than there are active firefighters. I would say, uh, I don't even know. I know Yonkers handled 15,000 calls last year, but I don't actually know how many firefighters they have there. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure the information is available, but you didn't tell me in advance you were going to ask that question, so I can't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark, Mark, with you being a Buchanan, can you uh, talk a little bit about the fire company that was actually on site at the uh, Indian Point power plant? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> the reason for that is um, the Indian Point fire company is very interesting because Indian Point is in the Verplank Fire Department fire district, but it's in the Buchanan police district. So Buchanan never actually responded to anything in the, um, at, at Indian Point. All of the Verplank firefighters had to be cleared by Indian Point and by New York State to actually go in there in the event of an emergency. I was told, because I did ask the question, what would happen? And I was told no one from Buchanan would be allowed into Entergy because we hadn't been cleared by Entergy. Whether that was true or not, I have no idea, but I do know because Buchanan, Montrose and Verplank do mutual aid for each other, I do know that the people in Verplank were cleared by it, but I know none of us in Buchanan were. Mark? Yes. Did you do any research on some of the fire stations that were closed in Yonkers? Um, one came to mind, Station 8 on Warburton Avenue. It was closed many, many, many years ago. Yeah, the answer is no, because what happened when I originally started the project, I was going to take pictures of all of the active fire stations and the closed fire stations. But after a year of doing it, I was like, I was rapidly running out of time. And I want, and I was running out of time just getting pictures of the active fire stations because 
Most of the volunteer firefighters are only staffed when there is a fire, when they're doing training or when they have a meeting. And as a result, I was spending both of my days off, Sunday and Monday, running around just trying to take pictures of the active fire stations, finding the inactive ones, which some have had been converted to community centers, some have been converted to apartments, some have been demolished. It just became sort of an impossible task. Originally on each page, at the moment in the book, it looks, um, you just see pictures of each station. Originally, I had wanted to have the history of each station in there and just coming up with the pictures for each one, I ran out of time. So as a result, I couldn't even put a history of the current fire stations in there, let alone the, um, the older ones. I believe that this station eight in Yonkers, the one that she is referring to was the old carriage house on Warburton, but that was torn down when they built that, as you called the atrocity looking station eight that uh, was built. And then also station two in Yonkers on Vineyard Avenue was condemned in, I believe, 1982 and was torn down as well, as you mentioned, station one, which was the old headquarters, which was condemned in 2015 and was subsequently torn down. Right. Yeah. Th thank, thank you so much, Mark. And thank you, um, whoever commented on Station 8. Um, my, my grandfather, Captain Ernest Welsh, was the, um, the chief at Station 8. Um, he was killed in the line of duty. So that's why I was just curious as to um, more history about that. I'm almost certain also that the historical um, society in Yonkers would probably have information on that. Thank as you. Well, as well as the fire department. I mean, they're incredible people up there. You know, they couldn't be helpful enough. So even if they don't know, if you called them, I'm sure they would help you or steer you in the right direction. I mean, they were just so helpful in Yonkers. And I was worried about Yonkers because I was told all the guys in Yonkers hated volunteers. <laughs> and I went down there and I, and I told them I was a volunteer. They couldn't have been nicer. They were really, really over the top helpful. So that myth about them being, hating volunteers can be put to rest now forever. Thank you. I think that station, old station eight that you're referring to it actually I had a uh, um, what's classified as a hayloft on top of it when they used to have the horse drawn uh, engines there and they had there. And I think that station six that uh, Mark referred to on Oak Street with the horses above the on the emblem above it still has a, a, a door that's no longer used, obviously, that fed the hay from up top for the horses. Interesting enough. Wow. <laughs> Does anyone want to add anything before we close up? Thank you, Mark, for your time. It was very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for all coming. I mean, it was an experience for me. The first time I've done a talk on Zoom, I've done other things with Zoom, but this was very interesting. And, you know, we'll see how it all goes in future. And um, you can get in touch with me if anyone wants anything. Um, through the website at doolittle.com. There is a thing to email me. Um, it's mgyoung at gmail.com is the best one. It'll also work through Doolittle, but if you have questions, call me. If you're in Buchanan and you want to get your hair cut, come up. I can't resist the plug. Or you can find me online. It's under peekskillbarber.com if you just want to call me, ask questions, 
whatever you want, you know, I'm happy to talk to anyone. Thank so you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark. It was really okay. interesting. And let me know if you need anything else. Will do. Okay. Have a, well, thanks. It, it seems like everything worked out. It certainly did, but have a great night, great weekend, great Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, and same with you. You know, and when I get the when the order actually comes through, I will drop down. I will drop down all the books at the library on Central Avenue because that's right near me. Oh, terrific! Awesome. Okay. Well, take care. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Have a great night. Okay.